Hello to our dear friends and our beautiful souls watching a new episode of Positive Living. Now our focus today may be again grim, but it is one of awareness and with that knowledge comes power. So prostate cancer is a cancer of the prostates and the symptoms involve discomfort in urination when it comes to frequency and pain. But there's another condition called benign prostatic hyperlapsia or the enlargement of the prostate, and it has very similar symptoms to those of prostate cancer. Again, there is discomfort in urination and a change in frequency. But with benign, benign prostatic hyperlapsia, this is a condition that is the result of maturity in men. As men age and their hormones change, this condition is very common. Now, of course, if it's left untreated, then complications may arrive with the kidney, with the bladder, or with the urinary tract. But again, it is not prostate cancer. So in this case, consulting with your doctor and better understanding what your symptoms mean is very crucial towards a more positive life. Welcome back to a new episode of Positive Living. Today I will continue talking about the disease that I have been talking to you about in the previous episodes. We reached the surgical management of prostate cancer. So this is usually offered to patients where the disease is localized within the prostate. It did not go outside the capsule, it did not invade any adjacent organs, and it did not spread to any distant organs. So there is no bone metastasis, no lymph node metastasis, no metastasis anywhere else. So it's only localized within the prostate. These patients will be seen by the anesthetist to make sure that there are no risks with the anesthesia to their health. If they are cleared by the anesthetist, we usually subject them to surgery. There is the open surgical approach, which is almost obsolete, and it's only done in exceptional cases. There is the laparoscopic approach which is using keyhole incisions and using laparoscopic instruments and the most advanced form which is available in Kuwait it is robotic laparoscopic radical prostatectomy. So this is removal of the prostate surgically with the assistant, assistance of a robot. The surgery is the same, the patient will be subjected to general anesthesia and then the patient will be padded and uh, prepped and draped in the usual fashion to the operating table. Then the surgeon will insert the laparoscopy ports. These are the same ones used for laparoscopy and robotics and then will hook up the robot to the patient. So the robot is made of three components the actual patient cart or the robot. And this is what the surgeon fixes on the patient. We have the console. This is where the surgeon sits to control all movements of the robot. And then we have the tower, which provides illumination, the light, so that the surgeon can see inside the patient. And it connects the console to the patient cart. The surgeon will perform radical prostatectomy and remove the whole prostate together with the lymph nodes in the pelvis. And after that, the surgeon will connect the urethra, which is the urinary tube, to the bladder and suture them together. And for this suturing to heal, there will be a catheter that goes across from the outside, inside, across the suture line into the bladder. And this will help the suture line to heal. The surgery usually takes four hours, maybe less, maybe more and this depends on the difficulty of the case. Usually the patient will be taken to the recovery room and then to the general ward and 
for the most part, most cases, usually leave after a day and a half to two days after robotic prostatectomy. The patient will go home with the catheter and then will return between one week to two weeks from the date of surgery for removal of the catheter and for removal of the surgical clips. So now after explaining to you the technical part of robotic prostatectomy, I will return after the break to explain to you what happens after surgery. So stay tuned. Thank you for staying tuned. Now I'll continue to talk about what happens after surgery, after radical prostatectomy. So the patient usually returns one week to two weeks after surgery. We remove the catheter, and then after removal of the catheter, almost universally all patients will have difficulty to control their urine. So we give them specific exercises to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles and this will improve return of their urinary control. These exercises are called Kegel exercises. The patient can do while sitting down, lying down, driving a car, taking a shower, it can be done anywhere. So the patient should stick to the schedule and do these exercises and then gradually urinary control will return back to normal. Like any other surgery, there are possible complications and these apply to any surgical procedure. So wound infection, risk of bleeding, and so on and so forth. And this you need to discuss with your doctor. However, specifically for radical prostatectomy, there are two feared complications, and these depend on different patients and depend on how the surgery went. The first one is the urinary control. The second one is erectile dysfunction. I will talk about the first complication or possible complication. So if we do the surgery on 100 patients, 98% the urinary control will return to its baseline. So it will return to how it was before surgery. Only 2% of patients are at risk of wearing diapers for a lifetime. And this depends on the age of the patient, how was his urinary control before surgery, and how did the surgery go. So most, if not all, patients will have good urinary control after surgery. What about the cancer? After we send the prostate to the pathologist, he will tell us what is the stage and what is the grade of the disease. And this will determine if we need to give further therapy to the patient after surgery. We might sometimes need to give some radiation. We might sometimes need to give some injections of hormonal therapy to try and improve response of the cancer to the treatment. So usually we see the patient after radical prostatectomy every three months for the first two years after surgery and we do the PSA blood test. PSA blood test should be negligible, should be zero after radical prostatectomy. If it's not or if it starts to rise, that means the patient still has cancer cells in his body. So every three months for the first two years, and then every six months for the third and fourth years, and then yearly thereafter. And this will tell us if the surgery was successful, if the cancer was under control, or if the cancer is coming back. If the PSA starts to rise, that means the cancer is coming back, and we have to give the patient more therapy in the form of radiation therapy, or hormonal therapy in, form of, in the form of injections. The other things we follow up when the patient comes after surgery is how the wounds have healed, is the patient having good urinary control, is the patient having any wound infection, and is, is the patient having good erectile function. And for all of these, we can have assessment tests and we can have treatments to try and improve the outcome of the surgical procedure. So these are uh, multiple episodes to educate uh, everyone about this disease, this common disease, and what are the treatment options available. I hope this was useful to all of you and hope to see you next time.